All right, so here we are, finally tackling an anime iceberg. Well, I mean, there's the Cowboy Bebop one that's uh, pretty short, and you should all go watch that one, it's pretty good. FYI, though, it's darkened because Sunrise took down the first version of it, so to play it safe, I just darkened it, but I might have done it too much, but uh, it's still a good video regardless. Anyways, Neon Genesis Evangelion is one of my all-time favorite animes. Here's actually a list of them. Now, before we get into this iceberg, I just want to clarify something. And that is, I will only be talking about stuff relating to the original series. And its onslaught of alternate universe games, manga, light novels, etc. I won't really be talking too much about the rebuild continuity, and its onslaught of, you know, alternate universe games, manga, etc. Because I don't like that continuity at all, and I don't really want to research it. And since this is, you know, my video, I can do whatever I want. If you like those movies, uh, more power to you. I just don't really care for them story-wise, and uh, so I don't really want to spend too much time, you know, researching something that I really don't care for. Again, just saying, not my thing. If they're your thing, then that's great, I'm happy for you. But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to be talking too much about them, except for, like, one or two entries where I kind of have to, like the sequel theory, for example. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's that. Also, real quick, I'm putting out a little search. There's a video online, or used to be online, where the, uh, it was about a guy who was power scaling the Angels in the Evangelion franchise. Not just the original series, but also the rebuild films. Well, the first three, the fourth one wasn't out at the time. I absolutely loved this video, but it got taken down, I think, because they used clips from the show, so probably did get removed for that reason. All that I remember about it is that it's an hour and a half long, it covers both Angels from the original show and the first three Rebuild films, and the Angel at number one was Humanity. I think it was, I'm pretty sure. He also went to ways that each Angel could defeat other Angels. It was a, it was an amazing video. I absolutely loved it. I'm really bad in archive it. But I've been looking for it for over a year now, but I cannot find a single thing about it. Please, I'm begging you help me find it. Please, I'm begging you. Also, if the dude who uploaded it somehow sees this video, I love that video. Thank you for making it. If you could somehow re-upload it or something, maybe censor it, like the clips or something, that'd be, that'd be awesome. If not, uh, oh well. But with all that out of the way, let's begin with the video. Yes. Death and Rebirth. Death and Rebirth is a recap film released in 1997. Though, while I say it's a recap film, it's kind of a recap, but kind of not. The first half of the film, Death, is around 70 minutes long and is just a recap of the series, though it does have some footage that wasn't seen in the original series. Though, since its release, this bonus footage has been released in several other ways, so it's not really exclusive to this film anymore. This part of the film was also split up into four different parts, each focusing on a single character. And finally, there's the second half of the film, Rebirth, which is an unfinished version of the first third of the end of Evangelion. Basically, it covers the first 27 minutes of it, so it ends with Asuka fighting the mass production Evas. Also, because this was an unfinished version of the end of Evangelion, there's a ton of differences between this and the film we ended up getting. Here's a list of most of the changes. I'm not going to list them all out because the, some of these things aren't that interesting, and it would take forever to list them all out. Overall, it's one of the very few recap films I'd say is worth checking out, and I really don't care for recap films. Pachinko. So pachinko machines are extremely popular in Japan. In case you don't know what they are, they're basically gambling machines that are similar to slot machines. And since it's so popular, it's not uncommon for pachinko machines to be themed around certain franchises. Some examples include Resident Evil, Persona, Terraformers, Gundam, Silent Hill, etc. And because Evangelion is such a massive, massive cash cow, there's been a ton of Evangelion pachinko machines. There's even been multiple Evangelion pachinko video games, just in case you want a virtual gamble. There's actually 10 different Evangelion Pachinko video games, ranging from the PS2, the PS3, and the Nintendo DS. I don't know who's the uh, target audience for these games, but... I mean, if you like these games, I... More power to you, I guess. One Hour Photo 
One Hour Photo is a psychological thriller released in 2002, starring Robin Williams. There's a scene in the film in which Robin Williams interacts with a kid holding an action figure from Evangelion. It's become a pretty popular meme in the Evangelion fanbase. Not just because it's Robin Williams saying Neon Genesis Evangelion, but also because the kid claims the action figure is a good guy that uses his silver sword to kill bad guys. But it's a figure of the mass production Evas, which, uh aren't exactly what I called the good guys. Some have also theorized that this little reference actually adds to the theme of the film. I personally haven't seen this movie, so I can't really say too much about that, but I'll leave a video from Ava Monkey in the description if you're curious about the subject. Pen Pen's Fate Towards the end of the show, Masato sends Pen Pen away to live with Hikara's family, as Tokyo 3 is becoming too dangerous for such an epic penguin. Now this has led to people wondering if Pen Pen was part of the Human Instrumentality Project, as he was a living thing. We don't actually know though if he was. It's been debated for years whether or not animals and plant life were part of the project. If he was, then I guess Pen Pen could return to life? But I mean, if not, then... Uh, yeah, Pen Pen's dead. Personally, I think he may have been part of the project because of how sentient he was, but... I don't know. It's really up in the air. Episodes 25 and 26 The final two episodes of Evangelion are fairly controversial. Well, they were controversial. Nowadays, most people agree that they're pretty good. But why were they so controversial? Well, I mean, if you're asking that question, you've never watched the show then, because it's pretty obvious why. For those that don't know, the final two episodes use a bunch of footage from previous episodes, with some new footage thrown in, and the main four characters, Shinji, Asuka, Rei, and Masado, monologuing and coming to terms with themselves. It's a very different experience than the previous 24 episodes, and the film. So, why did these episodes happen? Well, for years it was accepted that Studio Gainax simply didn't want to fund the show anymore, and so Anno and the crew couldn't finish the story the way they wanted to to which ultimately led to the creation of the end of Evangelion after a massive backlash took place demanding for a proper ending. Well, this isn't actually 100% true. You see, Studio Gainax actually was having a hard time making Evangelion, as it was a very stressful production. And despite the show's massive success, they had a hard time getting sponsors, which is ultimately what led to the final two episodes looking like the way they do. Side note, this is not the first time a Studio Gainax production ran out of funding before it ended. Anyways, it's possible though, that even if they had the sponsors, the final two episodes wouldn't actually be too different. As Anno has said it in an interview, and I quote, I wrote about myself. My friend lent me a book on psychological illness, and this gave me a shock. As if I finally found what I needed to say. So perhaps Anno always intended for these final two episodes to be like that at least in the dialogue narrative department. References and other anime. So being one of the most influential anime of all time, many different anime after its release have referenced it. Some more obvious than others. Here's a rapid fire list of some from shows that I've seen. In Lucky Star, on the cover of the 11th volume of the Lucky Star Character Song CD, you can see Asuka and Rei figures next to some Haruhai Suzuma figures. In Panty Pony Dash, there's an insane amount of Ava references, like a reference to Ava 01 holding Kawaru, Sachiel making a cameo, Pen Pen making a cameo, the Gendo pose showing up, Asuka's plug suit, and even Ava 01 itself make appearances. In Genshiken, in episode 17, you can see an Asuka and Rei doujin next to a Ghost in the Shell doujin. In Motakoi, Love is Hard for Otaku, the Gendo pose shows up in episode 2. In Desert Punk, in episode 14, they recreate the Evangelion congratulations scene. In Nisekoi, in episode 15, there's both the Gendo pose and a direct reference to the elevator scene. In Jashiraku, in episode 14, you can see Rei's silhouette. In Love, Chuniyobo, and Other Delusions, in episode 3, Asuka and Shinji are both referenced. In Nisei Madokatari, in the first episode, there's a parody of Shinji and Rei's conversation they have from episode 6. And finally, in My Bride is a Mermaid, in episode 16, Rei and Asuka can actually be seen in the background. But again, those are just ones from the anime I've seen. Anime that I haven't seen that references Evangelion include Sword Art Online, Barakamon, Grand Blue Dreaming, Gintama, 
801 TTS Air Bats, Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei, Soft Tenny, and Elf Ban Cat. I don't know how to pronounce that. Jet Alone. Jet Alone is a giant robot that makes its only appearance in Episode 7 of Evangelion. Since it's a robot, it actually can't generate an AT field. Though Shiro Tokita does state in the episode that it's only a matter of time before they can create an artificial AT field. Since its appearance, Jet Alone has become kind of a meme within the Evangelion fanbase, as its existence in the series is kind of weird. Jet Alone has no weapons, though can walk around for at least 150 days to its eternal nuclear reactor. Which Nerve, of course, messes with to create a nuclear meltdown that has to be stopped by Masato and Shinji. This implies that Nerve found the whole Jet Alone program to be a threat. But, like, it's really not. Like, sure, Jet Alone can last longer than the Avas, but it's not, like, remotely as tough as them. Because of this, many people believe Nerve didn't actually see Jet Alone itself as a threat, but the idea of funding being diverted from Nerve to the Jet Alone program being the actual threat. Anyways, despite only appearing in one episode of Evangelion, Jet Alone has appeared in other pieces of media. A variant of Jet Alone also appears in Neon Genesis Evangelion 2, which I'll talk about a bit more later. Jet Alone also appears as a playable fighter in Neon Genesis Battle Orchestra, which I'll talk about a bit more later as well. And finally, yes, Jet Alone's name is a direct reference to Jet Jaguar, as Jet Jaguar's original name was Red Alone, so they simply combine both names into Jet Alone. The manga. Most anime is adapted from something. For example, there's anime based on manga, light novels, visual novels, video games, etc. However, there are examples of the opposite happening, manga being adapted from an original anime. This is what happened with Evangelion, despite the manga technically being released first to generate hype. So they spoiled the show before it came out, right? Not exactly. You see, the Evangelion manga differs greatly from the anime. For examples, Gendo is portrayed as a flat-out villain, as not only does he straight up tell Shinji that he hates him, but he also wants the powers of a god so that he can take out his anger on the world. Several angels from the show are scrapped entirely. Kawaru is introduced far earlier in the series, and even fights Army Asella with Rei in Unit 02. He's also a lot colder in the manga, and so Shinji actively hates him. Asuka is also not as mean to Shinji as she is in the show, and she's also a test tube baby, which is... a very weird development. Toji also dies, and Shinji even knows that Toji is piloting Unit 03 before their fight. Also, the ending is entirely different, with Shinji and the gang living in a normal world. So why was the manga so different? Well, because it was written and illustrated by Yoshi Yukai Setamato, and Anno had very little, if any, impact on the series. The manga lasted for 14 volumes, from February 1995 to June 2013. Yes, it lasted almost 20 years, due to various hiatuses. What species is Pen Pen? Yes, Pen Pen is a penguin. But what kind of penguin? Well, none. You see, Pen Pen was created by humans via genetic experimentation, which explains how he can watch TV, read, drink beer, etc. He's also got retractable claws, which I don't think penguins have. His origin is never really talked about in the show, but in the manga, it's mentioned how he was adopted by Masato after she discovered him while working at her old job at some unnamed research lab. But keep in mind, this is its own continuity, so it's possible that this didn't happen in the show. The penguin in real life that looks the most like Pen Pen is probably the erect, crested penguin, so I think it's safe to say that he's just like an evolved version of that. Unit 00's Soul so we know that Ava 02 contains a portion of Asuka's mother's soul, and Ava 01 contains the soul of Shinji's mom. So, whose soul is in Ava 00? There's actually multiple theories as to what soul is in there, and the most commonly agreed upon theory is that Unit 00 contains the soul of Ray 1. You know, the little Ray that gets strangled to death. There's different pieces of evidence that back this up, ranging from episode 23 where Ray 2 asks the question, is this me inside the Ava? In episode 14, where it's tested if Shinji is compatible with Ava 00, while Ray is tested if she's compatible with 01. With any idea of testing either of them with Ava 02 being dismissed. 
And since Rei is a clone of Shinji's mom, it makes sense that Nerve would want to test if Shinji could be compatible with his clone mom Ava units. God, this series is weird. Like I said, though, there's other theories as well, but none of them are as popular as this one. Other theories include Ava00 not having a soul, Naoko Aji's soul being used, to even Lilith's soul being used. References and other media. Again, being one of the most influential animes of all time, it's no surprise that other forms of media have, have referenced, crossed over, or paid homage to Evangelion in some way. Some examples include Regular Show, Gravity Falls, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Steven Universe, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, South Park, Danger 5, Apex Legends, PUBG, Skullgirls, Heroes of the Storm, and Owl House. Petit Ava, Evangelion at School. This is a parody anime series released from October 2007 to March 2009. It's a 3D animated comedy series that's set in an alternate universe, where the cast of Evangelion go to junior high together. Though you may notice that there's three different rays at one time, and Ava Unit 01. Well, the show used all three of the Ray clones shown in the original anime as different characters and called them the Ray Sisters. And Ava Unit 01 is just a student at the school. It is now the size of a human, because, uh, of course. Now, this series was released online, so it's technically an ONA, and it also has a video game adaptation for the Nintendo DS. And unlike other Evangelion games, this game is actually canon to the series that it's tied to, and it has the canon ending to this continuity. I should also mention here how this ONA series and game are actually all adaptations of a manga of the same name that began publishing in May 2007 until September 2009. So the ONA series was just used to promote this comedy series. Neon Genesis Evangelion Anima, or Anima, one of the two. This is a series of light novels written from 2008 to 2013 and is one of the more popular alternate universes in the Evangelion franchise. The plot of these novels takes place in a world where the events of episodes 25, 26, and by extension the end of Evangelion, don't happen, as the human instrumentality project is averted by Shinji. Written by Ikoto, Yamashita, and Takaru Kajiyama, I can't really explain the entire plot, because that would require me to summarize five different books, but I will uh, give you some idea what happens in these books. This is going to be very confusing for a lot of people, because I assume most people haven't read these books. But uh, yeah, here we go. The books are set three years after the events of Evangelion. Ray 3, aka the Ray from the final few episodes, has split her soul into three different beings named, named Quartz, Clink, and Six. These clones orbit around the Earth, each controlling a copy of Unit 00. Also, Gendo and most of Nerve don't appear in the story, as they are trapped in a black dome known as Lilith's Chronostatic Spear. Shinji dies pretty early on in the story, but is reborn along with Ava-01, getting an upgrade. There's also a bunch of new Ava units, and Ava-like units that appear, like the Wolfpack US Avas, Evangelion Euro 2 Hertabies, Torwart, that's, <laughs> that's a great name, Super Evangelion, Angel Carriers, and Armeros. The moon is constantly getting closer to the Earth and is now filled with magma. Asuka also fights an angel on the moon. And Asuka also becomes an Ava unit. Uh, yeah, Crimson A1 is a human and Evangelion synthesis. Don't think about it too much, just roll with it. Shinji and Asuka get together, I, I think. So as somebody who ships them pretty hard, that's pretty dope. I think. Asuka returns to normal, but then fuses back with Ava-02 later on, but then returns to normal again. Mari from the Rebuild film shows up as a seven-year-old girl created by the U.S. branch of Nerve, and she's also half-cat. Okay. Shinji channels the power of the third impact through Ava-01's heart and becomes a giant being of light to try and stop the moon from hitting the Earth. By the way, the moon is being turned into New Earth, and by the end, Shinji, Asuka, all the rays, etc. are all now living on the moon, as it's fully become New Earth. Now, if you haven't read these books, or a summary of them, you're probably very confused by all of this. And that's very understandable. Anima, or Anima, I don't know how to pronounce that, is a very weird continuity. But hey, it's got some really awesome artwork of the Ava units. 
and some not so awesome artwork of uh, Mari in this story. I can't show this on YouTube. This is. Just, guys, come on. What are you doing? Overall, I can't say that I'd recommend these books because I haven't read them. Uh, I've just read a summary of the five volumes. If it sounds interesting, then I guess check them out. I don't know. I'll probably check them out. Hey, maybe one day we'll get an anime adaptation of it. Or, or not. Probably not. Pro probably not at all. The best girl debate. While Evangelion wasn't the first franchise to have this debate, nor... Oh god, nor was it the last. It certainly was one of the ones that made this kind of debate popular. Which girl is better? Asuka or Rei? This debate has been going on for decades now, despite it all being subjective, so it doesn't really matter. I don't know why people are so hung up about it, but whatever. My opinion, I like Asuka a lot more. I just find her to be more interesting and entertaining. But Masato's the best out of all of them, so it doesn't really matter anyways. Weird Products Evangelion is one of those heavily merchandised anime in existence, with some people even testing if you would live off just Evangelion products alone. But Evangelion merch isn't just your standard figures, posters, model kits, action figures, etc. Oh no. Oh no no no. You see, there's nerve emergency rations, shaving razors, Evangelion Swiss Angel Cake, CANNED BREAD, a coffee machine, body spray, humidifier, buckets, chopsticks, water hose, arm drink holders, dress fish chip grip grasper, what? what? And a Pizza Hut sponsored plush. God, I... Why? Why? Evangelions are not mechs. This is a pretty simple one. Neon Genesis Evangelion is a mecha anime, but the Evangelions themselves are not mechas, or mechs, if that makes any sense. Mecha, or mechs, are either robots or large mechanical suits of armor controlled by pilots or an AI system. Think, for example, Mobile Suit Gundam, Code Geass, Titanfall, Old Noah Zero, Full Metal Panic, or Black Ops 3. Yeah, technically Black Ops 3 is a mecha. Or wait, no, it's not a mecha, because those are walkers. Wait, are walkers technically mecha? Are they, are they different? I don't know. The point being is that Evangelions are not machines. They're biomechanical humanoids. So technically, that would make them cyborgs. Yeah, that armor is actually for a large living creature underneath it. For people who have watched the show, this is not a surprise at all, because... Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious they're not robots. I mean, we see their skulls, their blood, and well, we see one of them go crazy and eat an angel, so uh, it's pretty blatant. This entry is mainly just for people who haven't actually watched the show. Religious Symbolism So the Evangelion franchise is well known for its religious symbolism. From the cross-shaped explosions, to Lilith being crucified, to a cross that appears in the very opening of the show. This has led to a lot of people claiming the show is either one of three things religious propaganda, critical of religion, or the show is using religious imagery to work with the plot and themes of the show. So is there any truth to the show being openly religious? No. As revealed by Evangelion's assistant director, Kazuwa Tsuromaki, in an interview in 2002 said, and I quote, There are a lot of giant robot shows in Japan, and we did want our story to have a religious theme to help distinguish us. Because Christianity is an uncommon religion in Japan, we thought it would be mysterious. None of the staff who worked on Ava are Christians. There is no actual Christian meaning to the show. We just thought the visual symbols of Christianity looked cool. If we had known the show would get distributed in the US and Europe, we might have rethought that choice. So yeah, it was just to make the show look cooler. Now let's not say you can't place religious symbolism over the show, as you can have your own opinions on art but it wasn't intended to have any, like, Christian meaning. The Sequel Theory This is probably the most well-known theory in the Evangelion fanbase. This theory being that the four Rebuild films are actually stealth sequels to the original series. Well, how exactly can this be? Well, the idea behind it is that the series follows a cycle. Basically, the universe resets itself after the end of Evangelion. Some evidence pointing towards this theory being true are the fact that the oceans are red, much like the ending of the original series. There's a blood stain on the moon, much like at the end of the end of Evangelion, and Kawaru apparently remembering the events of the original series. 
People even began speculating that Mari from the Rebuilds is actually the daughter of Shinji and Asuka, which... <laughs> oh boy, that theory hasn't aged well. So is there any truth to this theory? No. Yeah, with the release of the fourth and final Rebuild film, a lot of the evidence used was actually debunked. Like how the Red Seas, for example, were red in the Rebuild films because the second impact purified the seas. So yeah, they're different continuities. Evangelion Credit Cards I was going to put this with the weird products, but I don't really consider these products. Anyways, in 2016, Visa and Sumitomo Mitsu joined forces and offered limited-time Evangelion credit cards. One with Ava Unit 1, one with Rei, and one with Asuka and Ava Zero 2. However, the most interesting things about these cards, to me at least, is that the ones that were shown off with the announcement all have the names of characters from Evangelion on them, instead of John Doe or Jane Doe. Apparently, Misato owns an Ava Zero One card, Kaiji owns a Rei card, and Ikaji owns the Asuka card. Magma Diver The Magma Diver is the 10th episode of the show, and is often looked at as the worst episode of the series. In fact, outside of Jet Alone, which I really don't understand the hate for, this is the only episode of the show that people seem to dislike. But I actually disagree with people. I agree that it's one of the weaker episodes of the series, but as somebody who really liked the Monster of the Week episodes of Evangelion, I thought it was a pretty neat episode. Really liked the fight in the lava. Some of the criticisms of the show include Asuka's way of flirting, being apparently too fan y for people, and the way the angel was killed in the episode being contrived. Here's a Reddit discussion from eight years ago that I found that I think explains both sides of the arguments pretty well. Though this episode probably gave at least 10 people in the world out there an inflation fetish, so... You know what, fair enough, this might be the worst episode. Toji on the poster. Toji is one of the more prominent supporting characters in the show. However, he's not like the most prominent supporting character. So why am I even bringing this up? Well, because Toji shows up on the cover of Evangelion Death and Rebirth, despite not being a main character in the show or that movie. Think about it this way. Like, if you were asked which characters should be on the cover of Evangelion, you'd probably say the main four, Shinji, Asuka, Rei, Sato, along with Gendo, Kaiji, Kawaru, and Akeji. I don't know, maybe I'm, like, overthinking this, but I just think it's kind of odd that he's on the poster, so prominently on the poster, too. Especially since he's only a pilot for a single episode. Granted, a pretty significant episode, in fact, an extremely significant episode, but still. Maybe they wanted to have two boys and two girls on the cover to make it, like, equal, but... I, I don't know. Evangelion Store Remember how I said Evangelion is a cash cow anime franchise? Well, there's even a store dedicated to just Evangelion products. In fact, there's actually three of them. They're, of course, located in Japan. One in Ikebukuro, Tashimi City in Tokyo, and the other one is in Haikone in, in Kanagawa. Now, being an Evangelion store, they sell Evangelion-style clothes, figures, and all sorts of other merch like shoes, DVDs, and even an Asuka boob mouse pad. At least they used the rebuilt Asuka who's 28 instead of the 14-year-old one. Also, can I just say to Kawaru saying, I'm waiting for us to arrive there is just kind of threatening. Also, I love the idea of Asuka shouting out, check it out, www.avastore.jp. It's a very, you know, very catchy catchphrase, you know? Toji's Scrap Death Originally, at the very end of episode 18, Toji was going to die at the hands of Ava Unit 1. I mean, when he watched the episode, it's very clear that Toji was supposed to die, since I don't know how anyone could survive what he went through. But yeah, he survived in the show, with just one of his legs being removed. So why was his death scrapped? Well, because some higher-ups at Gainax refused to let any of the kid characters die. Minus Ray 1 and 2, I guess. 
but Anna really wanted to have him killed off, so the trade-off was that he'd just lose a leg. Though in the manga, he does actually die by being crushed by Ava Unit 1. Side note, according to some drafts of scripts for episodes 24, 25, and 26, there was at one point supposed to be a subplot in those episodes where multiple characters would visit Toji in the hospital. Sega Saturn Game Neon Genesis Evangelion for the Sega Saturn, aka Neon Genesis Evangelion First Impression, was the first ever Evangelion video game. Released in 1996, it's a role-playing game set in the middle of the show. During a battle with an unnamed angel, no, that's, that's its name, literally, Shinji loses his memory and is forced to relearn how to pilot it. Gameplay-wise, it's a turn-based game where a slot machine decides who attacks first. There's also choices in the game that will lead to one of multiple endings. Some of these endings include... Shinji feeling guilty about losing his memory, and uh, just kind of walking around the city and that's the end of the game. Shinji succeeds in a combat simulation so he gets his memory back. In an ending where Toji and Kinsuke mess with Shinji's mind and convince him that he's a actual clown. And that he's dating the class rep. Which, uh, weird that Toji would do that. What good friends. This game is also extremely short, only lasting about 30 minutes, and was re-released in 2004 as a DVD. Yeah, they just took the cutscenes from the game, and then they put them together to create a non-canon OVA episode. Three years later, in 1999, a sequel would be released, titled Second Impression. This game introduces you to a new character, Mayumi, who contains the insubstantial angel. Again, that's its name and serves as a possible love interest for Shinji. Also, Shinji and his friends start up a band called the Earth Defense Group, so uh, there's that. Side note, I love the cover of the second game, because like, you've got all the characters, and then just like, someone's Ava OC in the middle of it all. Like, gee, I wonder if you'll appear in like, anything else. Barons of Hell. One of the earliest rumors about Evangelion was that the Evangelions themselves were based on the creatures known as the Barons of Hell from the Bible. There's one problem with that theory. There's literally no Baron of Hell in the Bible. I have no idea where this idea came from. Maybe somebody out there thinks that all the demons from Doom are in the Bible? Which, I mean, if that were the case, then the Bible would be a lot more interesting. Though the Avas were partially based on some mythological creature, that being the Onai, a demon from Japan. Link Connect Liquid this is probably one of the most common misconceptions in the entire Evangelion franchise. You see, people claim that the LCL stands for Link Connect Liquid. This is untrue, as the theater program for Death and Rebirth states that it's just not true. It's a misconception. To this day, we don't actually know what the LCL stands for, though some Evangelion references and spinoff material have suggested that one of the L's stands for Lilith. Although, to make things even more confusing, in the manga, LCL is flat out stated to be short for Link Connect Liquid. So, at this point, just believe what you want to believe, I guess. Nadia, the Secret of Blue Water sequel. Originally, Evangelion was conceived as a stealth sequel to the 1990 anime series Nadia, the Secret of Blue Water, also made by Studio Gainax. This original version of Evangelion would have been extremely different, but at the same time, kind of similar. You see, there were still angels in this version. They were just called the 16 Atlantean Atoms, and you can actually see them in Nadia very, very briefly. So why was this version of the show scrapped? Well, because at the time, Nadia The Secret of Blue Water's rights were owned by NHK, so they had to scrap all the connections to Nadia and create a new story. Which, I mean, thankfully they did, because we wouldn't have gotten Evangelion otherwise. Female Shinji To piggyback off of that last entry, originally Shinji was supposed to be a girl. In fact, his character design was based off of Nadia from The Secret of Blue Water. The only reason he was changed to being a boy was because both Nadia and Gunbuster, both Gainax productions, had female protagonists. So Studio Gainax felt the need to diversify. After Shinji was changed to being a boy, he was also supposed to have long hair that would wave in the wind but it was eventually scrapped because it apparently looked too feminine. 61 foot long Ray Slide As part of the Shiohaku Expo 2012 Summer Amusement event, a giant 61 foot long Ray Slide was built. This slide was rather bizarre, as not only was it just huge, but the slide was actually supposed to be one of Ray's legs. So like, you were basically sliding down her leg. Sadly, it doesn't seem like the slide lasted very long, so you can't actually go down it nowadays. The Dead Sea Scrolls 
The Dead Sea Scrolls are a pretty significant artifact in the Evangelion franchise, as they serve as the guide and philosophy of Seal. They're also alien in origin, and show up in the intro, which I didn't even know about until researching for this video. They also act like a prophecy, as it's written down exactly where and when the angels seen in the show will appear. Now what some people don't know is that the Dead Sea Scrolls are actually real. They were discovered in either 1946 or 1947 in Mandatory Palestine, on the northern shore of the Dead Sea. They're actually one of the oldest surviving manuscripts ever, as they're dated back to the first century. Live Action Film In May 2003, it was announced that a live action adaptation of Evangelion was in development, and so people waited for more updates. And waited, and waited, and waited, until eventually an update would come in 2008, when ADV Films founder Matt Greenfield and John Ledford revealed that the film had been pitched to producers like Jerry Bruckenheimer and Steven Spielberg. And after the 2007 Transformers film, interest in making the film increased. Then in 2009, it was announced that several US studios were competing for the rights to the film. And then finally, in August of 2011, the final update came when ADV Films sued Gynax as they claimed that they had refused to accept an option payment for the live-action rights to the franchise, which they saw as a breach of contract and resulted in losing the opportunity to produce a film. In this lawsuit, it was also revealed that the Evangelion live-action project wasn't just a single movie. It was at least three films, five TV shows, and three direct-to-DVD projects. Despite all of this, there's been quite a few pieces of concept art released for this film, even designs for Asuka, Rei, Misato. Or, I'm sorry, I meant Kate Rose, Rei, and Susan. A real light turder moment. Though in all fairness, apparently these weren't quote-unquote official names, though they still appear in the concept art, so... Uh, they're test names or something? I, I don't know. Also, the people producing this film seem to be like the master at claiming things, without backing anything up. For example, ADV Films claimed that big names were attached to the project, though to this day, nobody knows who they were talking about at all. It was rumored briefly that Emma Watson and Daniel Radcliffe were in talks to star in the movie, but this was quickly debunked. Also claimed that they had a director attached to it, but to this day, nobody knows who they were talking about. Battle Orchestra Neon Genesis Evangelion Battle Orchestra is a fighting game released on the PS2 in 2007 and the PSP in 2009. It's notable for being basically a Super Smash Bros. Evangelion clone, though a lot less blatant than, say, the TMNT, Kung Fu Panda, and PlayStation Smash Bros. clones. Published by Broccoli, the game contained a ton of playable fighters, 21 on the PS2 version and 24 on the PSP version, thus making it the superior version. They had pretty much every single fighter you could imagine from the original series. You got both variations of Unit 00, Unit 01, and its Berserk form, Ava Units 3 and 4, the Mass Production Avas, Jet Alone, Lilith, a ton of the angels from the show, even an Evangelion Type B from the Evangelion Detective manga that I'll talk about a bit later. There's even an original Ava unit called Evangelion Unit A. Also, Gunbuster makes a guest appearance in this game. And on the PSP version of the game, you could even play as the rebuilt versions of Unit 01 and 00. The game also featured a story mode for Shinji, Asuka, Rei, Toji, Kensuke, and Kaoru. Sadly, despite the positive reception to the game, it was never released outside of Japan. Super Robot Wars Super Robot Wars is a massive game franchise that, as the name suggests, is all about characters and mechs from mecha anime, manga, light novels, and games fighting each other, and with each other. Like I said, it's a massive franchise with over 30 main games, starting with the original in 1991, with its recent 30th main installment released in 2021. While they're normally tactical role-playing games, some spin-offs have been monster trading games, card battling games, tower defense games, etc. There's also a bunch of different continuities in this franchise, so it's just like, it, it's very, very confusing. Though, while a massive franchise, only a few of them have ever been released outside of Japan, due to the massive amount of licensing that goes on with these games. So how many franchises have been in these massive crossover games? <sighs> There's the Gundam Universal Century, the Gundam Cosmic Era, the Gundam Post-Disaster Era, the Gundam Future Century, the Gundam After Colony Era, 
the Gundam After War era, Gunbuster, Netflix's Ultraman, Boku Reno, Macross, Getter Robo, Invincible, not that Invincible, Bison Well, Giant Robo, Nagahama, Gridman, Eldoran, J9, Pat Labor, Votoms, Virtual Ons, Evangelion, Rebuild of Evangelion, Evangelion Anima, or Anima, I, I still don't know how to pronounce that, Fight Iser 1, Gunnex Sword, Full Mill Panic, Gerd Langen, Knights and Magic, Zoids, Ald Noah Zero, Zegapane, Valvrave the Liberator, aka a really awful garbage show, The Brave Police J. Decker, Yurika 7, Code Geass, Fooly Cooly, Mazinger, and Cowboy Bebop. Wait, why is Cowboy Bebop in this? It's not a mecha franchise. And before you comment going, that's a good list, but Joe, you missed this one, this one, that one, that one. Uh, look, guys, there's there's literally, like, I'm pretty sure almost a hundred of these franchises and, like, continuities games. I'm not listing them all. I, I, don't make me list them all. Anyways, yes, Neon Genesis Evangelion is featured quite a lot in these games. Well, okay, not really quite a lot, only a few of them. The original series is featured in six of these games, the Rebuild series is featured in four games, and Evangelion Anima, Anime, whatever, is in one game. It's also not just the Avas that appear in the games. Oh, no. Pretty much every single main or supporting character in the original series has appeared in one of these games, as either a playable character, an enemy, or an NPC. This is the same for the characters of the first three rebuild films, but not for Anima, as only the Avas appear. Ava Unit 04 Ava Unit 04 is one of the most mysterious Ava units in the entire franchise. Well, in the original series. There is a Unit 04 in the Rebuild films, but that's an entirely different thing. Actually, there's like a couple of Unit 4s, but they're not like Unit 4s, it's like, whatever. In the original series, it's mentioned that there was an Evangelion model being developed by the United States that had apparently been destroyed after testing the S2 engine. So, in the original timeline, Ava Unit 04 was destroyed. It's since appeared in several alternate universe spin-up material, like Angelic Days, Neon Genesis Evangelion 2, and Battle Orchestra. Also, in a lot of these pieces of media, Kensuke is often the one that pilots the Eva. Evangelion Another Impact The Japan Animator Expo is a series of weekly ONAs as part of a collaboration between Studio Kaira and Studio Duongo. Announced by Anno, this project was created to offer new animators more exposure. So, why am I talking about this? Well, because the 12th short they released was titled Evangelion Another Impact, Confidential. Lasting around 6 minutes, this short was created by Shinji Aramake, and its description reads, Another time, another place. An activation test of a decisive weapon was underway, with its development and operational trials shrouded in complete secrecy. The Another Number, Unit Null, suddenly breaks free of human control and goes berserk. For what purpose was another number, Unit Null created? The story of an Evangelion's activation, rampage, and howling in another world. So yeah, that, that was the description. But that's also basically just the plot. An Ava unit known as Ava Unit Null goes on a rampage, and the United Nations tries to take it down, but they can't. Null lets out a roar, and the film zooms out to reveal a completely destroyed Earth. It's obvious that the short isn't canon to the original series, it's just set in an alternate timeline, I mean, they directly say, another time, another place. Though, that hasn't stopped some people from theorizing that it takes place long after the events of End of Evangelion, due to the Red Sea and Destroyed World. But, that's just, like, very obviously not true. I mean, it, I guess it could be your headcanon, but, like, I, it's just not true. Girlfriend of Steel Released in 1997, the visual novel Neon Genesis Evangelion Girlfriend of Steel, aka Iron Maiden, is set in a slice-of-life world much like the alternate universe seen towards the end of the series. Although, while slice-of-life, the Avas still exist, as do the Angels. It's just an alternate universe where, in between missions, everybody's happy. Being a visual novel, the main gameplay is just interacting with characters, making choices, etc. Also being a visual novel, there's some romance. That's right, Shinji can either end up with Asuka or a new character named Manakarishima. Yeah, Rei gets dropped here because she's the clone of his mom, so th that's bad. Depending on your choices, Mana can live, die, or repeat. I couldn't help myself, I'm sorry. But yeah, she can either die and Shinji ends up with Asuka, or she lives and she gets an apartment with Shinji. I 
I didn't know two 14 year olds could own their own apartment, but I, I mean, here we are, I guess. Anyways, this game has been re-released a ton. The original release on PC and Macintosh being in 1997. It saw a Sega Saturn and PlayStation 1 release in 1998, a PlayStation 2 re-release in 2006, and finally a PSP port in 2009. Also a special edition re-released for PC in 2006. But that's not all. You see, Girlfriend of Steel got a sequel in 2005 for the PlayStation 2. Except it's not actually a sequel. Neon Genesis Evangelion Girlfriend of Steel 2nd is not actually a sequel, but instead just another slice of life visual novel, and this time it's actually set in that alternate world featured towards the end of the original series. So like Masato is a teacher, Rei has that universe's personality, and Kensuke and Toji are both Ava pilots for some reason. In this game, you also get to choose between Asuka and Rei, but also now Kouro, though he doesn't actually have an ending, so you have to either choose Asuka or Rei. Rei's ending has you marry her and have kids. She's not a clone of his mom in this universe, so it's okay. Meanwhile, Asuka's ending has Shinji leaving with Asuka to Germany. Girlfriend of Steel II also got a manga adaptation that I'll talk about in its own section because it differs a lot from the game. Angel Raising What do you think of an Evangelion video game? What do you imagine? A fighting game? An RPG? A strategy game? A visual novel or a pachinko game because for some reason there's like a million of those? How about a game in which you raise angels? Neon Genesis Evangelion Shido Isake, often referred to as Angel Raising Project, is a Tamagotchi clone released in 1999 for the Bandai Wonderswan, one of the most successful portable consoles of all time. Don't look it up. Take my word. It was super successful. Trust me. I wouldn't lie to you. The game as you play as Kaji, arriving at Nerve at the end of the eighth episode of the show, and Gendo's like, wow, did you just bring me the embryo of Adam? That's crazy. The first angel? That, that's nuts. I think you should, like, raise it, and then we could, like, have it fight my son in a mech. I think that'd be really cool. And Kaji's just like, okay. All right, sure. Okay. And so you have to raise Adam into one of many adult forms it can take. In the game, you can also explore every single part of Nerve HQ. No, really, pretty much every part of Nerve HQ you see in the show, you can explore. Even, uh... Even the hospital room. <clears throat> Anyways, once you raise Adam out of his embryo stage, you can then train him to fight, and then you can send him off to fight the Ava units. Very weird, very weird game. Thankfully though, it got an English patch, imported online, so you can now raise your own Adam. Even if you don't have a Wonder Swan, which I mean, I'm sure you do, I mean, everyone does. Side note, there's another Evangelion game where you raise angels, titled Evangelion RPG Angel Raising Project, this game was released for phones in 2006, and is a dungeon exploration game. In this game, you capture an angel using a capture unit, where you can then bring the captured angel back to Nerve HQ, so you then can nurture it, and so it can grow into a big, strong angel. Weird that there's two different Evangelion games where you raise angels, and they're both pretty much titled the same. Did Shinji and Asuka bang? So there's a pretty well-known theory about Shinji and Asuka. The theory is that the two banged towards the end of episode 15. So, uh, what's the evidence? Well, it's, um, it's just a lot of assumptions and stuff. Like, people take the dialogue from episode 15 and the end of Evangelion, and then they say these pieces of dialogue, like the I need you line and the do you love me line, like, suggest that they banged. There's also some stuff shown to Asuka by one of the angels, and then after the night Asuka and Shinji kissed, Asuka's like, not really mad about Shinji seeing her in a towel, so like that's used as evidence. In episode 16, Shinji's pretty confident, which is like, it's the idea that like, he banged Asuka, so now she's like, damn, I'm a man, or whatever, right? But look, here's a really big post about the subjects. As previously mentioned, I do ship these two really hard, but I don't really buy this theory. I mean, in, in the show, it's very obvious they wanted a bang, but I don't think they did. This whole subject is just really weird to me, and I think it's just people overthinking stuff. Like, if they did bang at one point, you'd think that somebody who worked on the show would have said something about it by now, because it's a pretty well-known theory. Sorry if I butchered the explanation for this theory. It's kind of complicated, and truthfully, I don't really get most of the evidence. 
I'll leave a link to a video and a thread on Ava Geeks about the subject, as you can get more information with those. I guess I'll also throw in the sister theory to this, and that theory is that Asuka is pregnant with Shinji's kid towards the end of the show, and we see her having morning sickness. But, like, if you watch the show, it's it's very clearly mentioned by Misato that Asuka is having problems with her period. So, like, I have no idea where this pregnant thing came from. Like, it's blatantly obvious that it's just her having an issue. Nope. Nope is a horror film released in July 2022, directed by Jordan Peele. And at first glance, it has absolutely nothing to do with Evangelion. However, the monster featured in the film, Jean Jacket, was actually designed off of the 10th Angel from Evangelion. Jordan Peele stated that this was because he was impressed by the hyper-minimalism and biomechanical design flair with this angel. He's also just, like, a really big fan of the original show, so I guess this was just his way of paying tribute to it. Also, keep in mind this film just came out, so I'm sure there will be a better image of Jean Jacket in the future, but as of right now, this is all we got. Transforming Bullet Train Robot Shinkelion So I talked about this franchise in the Godzilla Iceberg, because Godzilla himself shows up in the series. Transforming Bullet Train Robot Shinkelion is an anime series that lasted from January 2018 to March 2022, and had 117 episodes and a film. This series was your standard kid mecha anime. Monsters are invading into the world, so a bunch of kids have to hop in mechs that double as trains to save the day. So why am I talking about it again? I did an Evangelion Iceberg. I mean, if you've watched the Godzilla Iceberg, you'll know exactly why I'm talking about it here, because I mentioned it in that video, but, uh, you see, the characters of Transforming Bullet Train Robot Shinkelion travel to a parallel world that's just Evangelion. No, it's not a homage to Evangelion. Shinji, Asuka, Rei, Gendo, Misato, and the Angels all exist in this world. Shinji is even a supporting character in the show and shows up in the film in his Ava Unit 1 inspired train mech. Oh yeah, and there's actually two train Avas. They look similar, but they're different. Also, I lied. The angels don't exist in this universe. Instead, they all just exist as one dude. Like, it's just, like, all of them mushed together. Also, Shinji, Asuka, and Masato's voice actresses all return to voice them. It's a really weird crossover. Also, Hatsune Miku shows up in the show as well because... <laughs> of course. It makes me really happy that we live in a world where a kid's mecha anime has Hatsune Miku staring down Godzilla while Shinji's piloting his Ava trade unit to go and fight him. Good times, I assume. I'm not going to watch this show. Ayanami Raising Project Ayanami Raising Project is a simulation game released in 2001 for the Dreamcast and 2003 for the PlayStation 2. This game is you playing a second lieutenant... Uh, second lieutenant. He doesn't have a name. You're assigned to care for Rei over the course of a year, and thus, you begin taking care of Rei by creating her schedule, monitoring how much time she's at home, at nerve, or at school, all while the events of the show happen on the background. So, eventually Rei does die. But hey, Rei 3 comes into the game, and uh, so it continues a bit more. This game features a variety of different endings, and even some romance options. That's right, Shinji and Gendo are fighting for Rei's love. Wait, what was that about Gendo? Romantic competition for Rei's affection is between 2nd Lieutenant Nerve Commander Gendo and... Wait, 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 2nd Lieutenant... Wait, you? Um... Those are adults and Rei's, uh... Oh, this isn't good. Like I mentioned earlier, two years later it was re-released for the PS2, and this time there's an Asuka route to where you can care for her instead of Rei. And in her route, she can be romantically involved with Shinji, Kaiji, and 2nd Lieutenant... Again? No. God, he's an adult! You can't do that! Like with Girlfriend of Steel, this game received a manga adaptation, though it only lasted about two volumes, so it was pretty short. Ayanami Raising Project also features a variety of different endings, all depending on your actions. For example, Rei can become a violinist, a policewoman, a maid with a gun, or an, an SMM queen... <sighs> While Asuka can become an astronaut, a nun, a singer, a scientist, or a manga artist. Ayanami Raising Project sounds like a game. Wait, why is Rei marrying Lupin the Third? Shinji Akari Raising Project. This is a... well, not a sequel to Ayanami Raising Project. 
It's more like a spiritual successor. Released for PCs in 2004, this game has you playing as Shinji, who is scheduling himself between his home life, nerve, and his school life. It's a simulation game much like Ayanami Racing Project, only this time you're actually playing as the kid, not some random OC monitoring them. In the game, there's four different routes. The Thanatos route, which is basically just a retelling of the original series, the Pathos route, which is basically the same as the series, but this time it's got a lot more comedic stuff, with Shinji and his friends doing some wacky slice-of-life hijinks, like camping, swimming, and preventing Third Impact. You know, the classic summer of 2015. Fun times. Then there's the Campus route, which has Shinji swap universes and jump into a universe with no Avas or Angels. Except if you choose to do that route, but then choose to go back to your original world, it's revealed that the whole campus route was actually just Masato's dream. Finally, there's the fourth bonus route, only obtained once you beat the game. You play as Kaworo, and your goal is literally to just seduce Shinji. During this game, you can also have Shinji romance several characters, like Asuka, which is obviously the correct ending, Rei, Mana, Kaid, Satsuki, Aoi, and... Wait, you don't remember Mana, Kaid, Satsuki, and Aoi? They were always there on the show, did you forget? Okay, jokes aside, yes, Mana from Girlfriend of Steel actually returned to this game, while Kaid, Satsuki, and Aoi are all new characters created for the game. Also, these three are all adults, so, um... Those aren't good roots for Shinji. Hey, there's even a Masato root for Shinji. Ah! It should have been me, not him! It's not fair! Why, why can't there be an Evangelion visual novel where you can date Masato as an adult? Why do you have to be a child? Don't answer that. Well, at least my ship succeeded. Damn, Mana and Rei, what the... That's kind of messed up to say that, their friend's wedding. Wow, it's kind of surreal seeing Gendo happy his son got married. But romance choices and scheduling are far from the only things you can do in the game. There's also the ability to battle angels. And because it's a simulation game, all of Shinji's stats and well-being in the normal game will impact how well you do against the angels. Overall, Shinji Ikari Racing Project is probably the most popular out of all the Evangelion visual novels. Oh, and I guess I should also mention that this also received a manga adaptation. Influences Neon Genesis Evangelion is an extremely influential anime, but it also had a ton of influences that helped shape the show into what it is today. One of the biggest influences on the show was the Ultraman franchise, mainly some of the kaiju fights and the designs of the plug suits themselves. The manga anime franchise Devilman also served as inspiration, mainly for the show's tone changing from your standard shonen mecha to, well, Evangelion. Also, the ending of Evangelion was directly inspired by the ending of Devilman. You know, both pretty sad endings, although the end of Evangelion is kind of like somewhat hopeful. Devilman is, no, there's no hope there. The anime Space Runway Ideon also served as inspiration, with its heavy psychological themes and bleak tone. I should also mention Mobile Suit Gundam inspired Ava to a certain extent with its child protagonist struggling with their mental health, but I mean like, pretty much every mecha franchise at some point is going to be inspired by Gundam. And of course I have to mention Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, which served as a massive inspiration for Evangelion, from Asuka's relationship with her mother, to the angels themselves, to Unit 01's appearance towards the end of Evangelion. There were many more franchises that influenced Evangelion. Otto himself has said that he took things from pretty much everything. And because he said everything, I'm gonna make the bold claim that Evangelion was partially inspired by Bedtime for Bonzo, and you can't say otherwise. Digital Card Library Neon Genesis Evangelion Digital Card Library was a video game released for the Sega Saturn in 1997. It's a rather weird game because it's actually not just one game, 
It's a collection of Evangelion minigames that you play to unlock digital cards that showcase art from the show or pictures of merchant figures. Imagine beating Halo 2 on Legendary and your reward is a picture of a Halo t-shirt. Some of the minigames included in this game include watching Gendo's eyes make a pattern and then repeating it, a clone of the game Irritating Stick based on Magma Diver, a slot machine-like game where Shinji goes around town getting Masato some beer, only to then like play slot machines in order to get said beer, a slide puzzle, cool, and there's also a game where you play as Pen Pen sliding around Masato's apartment, so that's pretty dope. How many Ray clones are there? So we know about Ray 1, 2, 3, and of course there's like the alternate continuity ones, but how many Ray clones are in the original show? Like the soulless Ray clones, the dummy plug ones. This isn't even an entry that I have an answer for, I'm genuinely curious, does anyone know? Like, is, was it said anywhere? There's gotta be like, at least a hundred of them, right? I mean, look at this. I, I counted maybe like 30 or 40, somewhere around that ballpark. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter at the end of the day, because they all like, you know, melt. The AIDS PSA. Okay, so this one isn't actually from Evangelion, but it does relate to it. For a long time online, there was a rumored Evangelion AIDS radio PSA, where the English voice actors for Shinji and Asuka, Spike Spencer and Tiffany Lynn Grant, make sex sounds and then audio comes over them going, one of them is actually killing the other. And because it had Shinji and Asuka's English voice actors, people assumed that this PSA was related to Evangelion. But nobody could figure it out because it was lost media. Though eventually Spike Spencer and Tiffany Lynn Grant would confirm this PSA did exist, but it had no relation to Evangelion. It just turns out that at the time, Spike Spencer and Tiffany Lynn Grant just kept getting radio commercials together. But like I said, it was lost media, so people still wanted to find it regardless. And eventually it was found in 2020. I can't uh, show you the audio because one, copyright, and two, this PSA never actually aired. It didn't air because Asuka and Shinji's voice actors were so good at their job that it sounded way too real to be released. So I don't want to get age restricted. So how was it found? Well, luckily, Tiffany Lynn Grant was, was actually able to find a copy of the PSA in her collection, where she eventually went on to digitize it and allowed the YouTuber Redbard to put it in a video talking about it. So I'll leave a link to their video in the description with a bunch of other links relating to the topics I've talked about in the iceberg. Do, do people know that I do that? Like, there's like a million links in every one of my iceberg descriptions. Uh, but anyways, yeah, the AIDS PSA is now available for everyone to listen to. It's a Miraculous Win. It's a Miraculous Win was a manga that was released from 2006 to 2015 that ran for 14 volumes. Written by Komei Yashida, this story was focused on an office woman named Sakara Mogami who is obsessed with playing Evangelion-themed pachinko. Yes, this manga was partially written to promote Evangelion pachinko machines. Anyways, this led to her becoming a huge fan of the series, and so she started buying a ton of Evangelion things. So you're probably just thinking to yourself, is that it? That's the entire plot? Well, not exactly. You see, the story is actually about Sakura reliving scenes from the anime in real life, reminiscing over the show, working with people who look like Evangelion characters, and even starts dating a dude who looks like Kaworu. So yeah, the story was basically just about a woman suffering from Evangelion Syndrome and gambling addiction. Hold up, real quick, what kind of sandwich is that? Did she just order bread with like raw meat and a single piece of lettuce? This woman's insane. Daimei Angel. In 1995, a contest was held by Gynax involving fans designing their own original angel. And whoever's design Gynax liked the most would be drawn by Yo Yashinari, one of the show's animators in the March 1996 issue of, of Animage. The angel design that won was created by a man named Satu Dami, and the angel was dubbed the Daimei Angel. Daimei also received some stats along with the sketch created by Sato. These stats being that its core was on its head, its first pair of arms contained Duatron rifles, which are apparently, quote, more powerful than the Positron rifles of the Evangelion. It's also 100 meters tall, and it has like this little kind of horn thing that's called the Angel's Charm Point. Whatever that means. While a cool design, it sadly never made its way into any official Evangelion stories. It's just this one drawing, and that's it. Misato shot Kaiji. So there's a theory that the person who shot and killed Kaiji in the anime, and I guess manga by extension, was Misato. And there is absolutely no evidence for this. 
At all. Like, just none. In fact, it's directly been said by Anno that Kaji was shot by an unnamed SEAL, UN, or nerve agent. The only piece of evidence people point to for this theory is that after Kaiji dies, there's an establishing shot of Masato's apartment with her name on the door. Good evidence. The Neon Genesis Evangelion Proposal Created in 1993, the Neon Genesis Evangelion Proposal was a rough outline created for the series for promotion. This proposal had a ton of differences from the show we ended up getting. For example, after Unit 3 is destroyed, and Unit 4 is mentioned to be destroyed, Units 05 and 06 were meant to be introduced in the show, with both being destroyed in the finale. There were originally going to be 28 different angels, 12 of which were meant to attack all at once during the finale and literally wipe out the entirety of the United States. Shinji would also realize at one point that Asuka is in love with him, Kawuru was going to be a transfer student at the school, the angel Ariel was going to attack the Avas in close aerial combat instead of using its mind attack. This would require the Evangelions to be equipped with flight harnesses. Both SEAL and the three Nerve Command operators weren't in the story either. And finally, Rei was going to actually get along with Asuka. Hyuga's Gay In one of the early scripts for episode 24, it was heavily implied that Hyuga was gay, instead of being into Masato. Nothing more than that, really. Just, uh... Man was gay. Evangelion Retake Retake is probably the most well-known Evangelion fanfiction out there. It's an adult doujin that tells the story of Shinji getting a vision of the end of Evangelion and his attempts at trying to prevent it from happening, though it's most known for Shinji and Asuka finally getting together. So it's a pretty big win for shippers. Except there are some scenes where they're, you know, having at it, which is not something that I'm interested in seeing at all. So I just recommend the safe for work versions of the story. It doesn't change any of the plot, it just, you know, removes those scenes. In fact, all the gore is still in the story, so it's the same story just without the bagging being shown. This story is also known for its, um, really weird portrayal of Rei, at least at the beginning of the story. She gets really jealous of Asuka, so she makes her hair red, wears blue eye contacts, and tries being Asuka. But Shinji's just kind of like, what? And so Rei eventually endgames herself. Anyways, I think it's a pretty good story. The safer work version, I cannot stress that enough. But everything in the beginning with Rei kind of sucks in my opinion. It's just really weird and out of character. But my thoughts on this story aside, like I said, Retake is very well known. So well known, in fact, that there's even rumors that, that Asuka's Japanese voice actress has read it. Keep in mind though, this is just a rumor. There's not really any evidence for this. Retake also has a soundtrack to it that you're supposed to listen to while reading. There's also been an attempt at adapting the entire doujin into animation. The project, I think, is still in production, as it seems the last update was around five months ago. Overall, it's a pretty well-known doujin. If it sounds interesting, I'd suggest checking it out, as I left out, like, 95% of the plot when describing this, purely because, I mean, you can go read for free right now. Operation Yashima In the show, Operation Yashima is the name of the plan to reroute all power in Japan to an Evangelion sniper rifle in order to take out an angel. Side note, this is probably one of my favorite pieces of animation of all of Evangelion. Anyways, in 2011, Following the horrific Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, a Twitter campaign was started to support Tokyo Electric's plan to conserve electricity. This was in order for Tokyo Electric to use 38 million kilowatts of power to help cool down a nuclear plant's fuel rods. This Twitter campaign was called Operation Yashima. Rei and Kaoru are albino. This is one of my favorite theories by Evangelion. There's actually a decent amount of people who believe that Rei and, Ka and Kaoru are albino. This is very obviously not true, because people who are albino, you know, don't have blue hair, and they can't really go outside without protection, and they also have poor eyesight. Well, usually a poor eyesight. I don't really know where this theory comes from, but it's just not true. After the End This is an audio play released in December of 1996. Released as the second track in the Neon Genesis Evangelion Edition CD, it's a non-canon comedy play where the cast of Evangelion return to set upon discovering that they've gotten picked up for a second season. And so now with no script, they have to come up with ideas for how to continue the show, while also getting good ratings. The entire cast reprise their roles, and even Anno makes a cameo. Pen Pen also finally gets a speaking role, where he really lays into the cast. There's also a scene in which Rei both verbally and physically assaults Asuka, so I'm sure that will please somebody. 
thankfully, After the End has been fan subbed, so anybody can watch it. Or, I guess, listen to it. Or wait, no, wait, that would be watching it because you're reading the text. Oh yeah, so okay, yeah, you can watch it. Secret of Evangelion. The Secret of Evangelion is a visual novel released in 2006 for the PS2, and in 2007 for the PSP, PC, Mac, and mobile phones. Developed by Lakish, this visual novel tells the story of Kiowa Kenzeke, an old friend of Kaji Misato, who is now a nerve agent, as he tries to uncover the Human Instrumentality Project. Being a visual novel, there's a ton of different routes in this game, which lead to a variety of different endings, that all depend on how much information you discover. Kiyoya is also a rather unique individual, as after he's injured during the battle with Satchel, he's given an experimental organ transplant from an angel because... Why not, I guess? You know, let's, let's just see what happens. And because of this, everybody at NERV is just like, Yo, you good? You're human, right? Whenever, like, they see him. Which, honestly, is a very fair thing to ask. Now, you might have noticed way earlier in this video, when I was talking about Ava Unit 04, some of the images I used for that entry looked, well, new. Like you've never seen them before. That's because those images come from this game. During the game, Kiowa eventually ends up in a nerve base in Nevada, where Unit 4 is being overseen. Like in the show, some tests go away, and, you know, it's destroyed. Well, not quite, actually. You see, in this continuity, it's revealed that Unit 04 was actually stolen by Kiyoya and brought to Japan from the Nevada base. And of course, while in Japan, Unit 04 ends up going berserk after being tested with a dummy plug, and so Shinji has to stop it. Kiyoya isn't the only new character introduced in this game. There's other characters like, like Hitomi Kaga, Hajime Suruga, Mitsuro Wakatake, Koji Katori, Porter, and Hawk. As mentioned earlier, this game was released for the PSP, Mac, and PC a year after the PS2 release. This version of the game is basically the same, but with some new artwork and an exclusive quiz game where Asuka and Rei host. Because, I don't know, I guess they needed more content. It's overall a pretty unique Evangelion visual novel, since most of them seem to just be dating sims or slice of life stories, while this is like an actual, well, attempt at an in-universe story. Although it's not actually canon, it's its own continuity. I won't let you kill me. Originally, the final line in the end of Evangelion was going to be Asuka saying, I won't let you kill me, idiot. A pretty fair thing to say while being strangled. This line was scrapped due to Asuka's voice actress apparently not saying the line how Anno wanted it to sound. So eventually Anno was like, Hey, you know what Shinji does in the hospital? Like, imagine if you were Asuka in that scenario. Like, how would you react? And she responded simply with, Disgusting. Extended Live Action Scenes The live action sequence towards the end of the series was originally going to be much longer. The idea was that this world Shiji was seeing was a normal world, where he doesn't exist. And that he would see Asuka, Masato, and Rei living out their depressing lives, all played by their voice actresses. Asuka would even be seen sleeping and living with Toji, and would be neighbors with Masato. Thankfully, this footage isn't lost, and you can actually watch the entire sequence as it was released exclusively in the Renewal of Evangelion, which is basically like the Director's Cut Special Edition DVD set for Evangelion that sadly was never released outside of Japan. But fan subs do exist for it, so I guess that's a win. Overall, it's a very weird short, and I personally think it was for the best that it was cut. Side note, Ano actually voices Shinji in this. Well, a mysterious voice that's presumably Shinji. Episode 16. When watching Evangelion for the first time, you might be caught off guard when getting to episode 16, regardless of how you're watching it. This is because it's not up to the same quality animation-wise as the other episodes. So why is that? Was this some like artistic decision or something? Well, no. This is because episode 16, or the original episode 16, is lost media. You see, in either the late 90s or very early 2000s, the original negative for episode 16 was lost, and so Gainax had to use lower quality 35mm interpositives for future releases. Gainax has attempted to make this episode look better over time, but like, it's still very noticeably lower quality than the other episodes. 
In fact, sometimes it's even gotten worse. Like, you see this? This is from the original TV broadcast. This is from the Blu-ray, which was the copy Netflix used. Yeah, pretty bad. Thankfully, there is a fan project attempting to restore the episode, and with the last update being earlier this year, 2022, there's a decent chance that maybe we'll eventually get to see it restored. Tamagotchis. The multi-purpose egg-shaped decisive weapon, Avachi, Avachi, Avachi? Yeah, Avachi, we're going with that one, is a series of Tamagotchi games released in Japan in 2020 and the US in 2021. For those that don't know, which I assume there's probably a decent amount of you that don't know, Tamagotchis are small little devices containing a virtual pet you take care of. They were extremely popular in the early 2000s. Anyways, these little devices allow people to have a pet angel. So this is the third angel raising game. Weird that there's three of these and yet only one Evangelion fighting game. In this game, you have to take good care of your angel by playing mini games, cleaning it, coaxing it out of its AT field if you neglect it, don't neglect it, feeding it, etc. This game also has two different endings. If you take good care of your angel and it doesn't evolve into a special adult, the angel will say bye-bye, leave, and then trigger third impact. Good work. Good work, guys. You, you did it. The second ending, or the bad ending, has you fail to coax it out of its AT field, and so Nerve will kill it. Which is kind of like the good ending, but I... Okay, I guess it's the bad ending, technically, I guess. I don't know. Angelic Days. Neon Genesis Evangelion Angelic Days is the manga adaptation of Girlfriend of Steel 2nd or Iron Maiden 2nd, whichever title you prefer. Created by Fumino Hayashi, it ran for six volumes from November 2003 to December 2005. In this continuity, Shinji and the gang are all living normal lives. Except not really because sometimes angels do appear and they do have to fight them. But, but you know, for the most part, you know, they're just living their normal lives. Also, in this universe, everybody wants to date everybody. Toji and Hikari are dating, Kensuke wants to date Asuka, but Asuka wants to date Shinji, as does Rei, as does Kawuru, and Shinji's just sitting there like, wow, I get three different options, that's pretty crazy. Though this little love square, or Petsagon, or Decagon, whatever, gets thrown into chaos when Nerve has literally all of them split up across the world. And uh, that's the end of the fourth volume. So what happens after that? Well, you gotta wait till the sixth volume, because the fifth volume is just a giant flashback that shows Gendo and Yu at junior high, and they do like the classic anime rom-com thing where Yu is like the perfect person, and she sees this troublemaker Gendo, and she's like, I'm gonna help you. And so Gendo, you know, becomes, well, <laughs> Gendo. And so we move on to the sixth volume, which actually contains what happens to the characters. Kensuke, Rei, and Ritsuko both realize that Asuka, Shinji, and Gendo will never love them. So they just kind of like stop and give up on their feelings. Which uh, in this universe, Yu is still alive, so uh, Ritsuko is trying to be a bit of a homewrecker. Hikari and Toji are still together, but it's a long distance thing. Shinji and Asuka also get together, and Kawuru is just gone. No, really, he just like never shows up again, and his entire reason for existing in the story is never explained. Like, is he an angel still working for Seal? It's never explained. Also, Masato's here, and she's dating Kaji, and everything's going great. Just thought I'd let you know, you know? At least she's happy. Netflix Censorship Once Netflix announced it had gotten the rights to stream Evangelion, fans were pretty excited that a new generation of people would be introduced to Evangelion. Also, there'd be, like, a legal way for most people to see it. But then they announced that they're redubbing it, and people didn't like the new dub, but I watch it subbed, so I, I don't really care. But arguably the most controversial thing about this Netflix release, besides the removal of Fly Me to the Moon, was Kaoru saying, I like you to Shinji in the dub, instead of, I love you. And so a lot of people claimed that Netflix was removing a gay romance. Which, I don't know, I think it's a very nothing change to be completely honest with you. I, I mean, I get the argument people make, but I don't know, he's still saying I like you, like, it's the implication's still there. I don't know. Then, of course, there's the really funny change, where in the end of Evangelion, instead of Shinji saying, I'm so... I can't say the F-word, I'll be demonetized, a classic, classic line, Shinji says, I'm the lowest of the low, 
which is, funny enough, a more literal translation of the original Japanese. But I guess the other line was far too iconic at this point. City Shrouded in Shadow I talked about this game a bit in my Godzilla Iceberg, as Godzilla monsters appear in it. Anyways, City Shrouded in Shadow is a disaster survival RPG game released in 2017 for the PlayStation 4. The game has you playing as several different characters in Japan trying to escape a city under attack by kaiju. Like I just mentioned, Godzilla and several other monsters from his franchise appear in the game, as do various Ultraman characters, Gamera monsters, Pat Labor units, and Evangelion units. Yeah, Ava units 0, 01, 0, 02, and 0 all make appearances in this game, along with Sachiel, Shamshell, and Sakakuel. Keep in mind though, you don't actually play as any of them. At the most, you would just like watch them fight or walk around. And as somebody commented on my Godzilla Iceberg, none of these franchises actually like interact with each other. So like you're not gonna see, for example, Godzilla, Ava Unit 1, Ultraman, and Gamera have like a four-way battle. Sadly, City Shrouded in Shadow was never released outside of Japan. Probably, well, no, not probably, obviously because of licensing issues. Though you can still play it on PS4s around the world, you just gotta import a copy. And, well, I hope you can understand the plot because there's no English subtitles, so you kinda have to know Japanese to understand what's going on. Shout out to the Yakuza members who are still trying to kill you right underneath some Ava's battling an angel. Never stop the grind, even in the face of Armageddon. Neon Genesis Impacts Remember how I talked about earlier in the video how another impact was part of the Japan Animator Expo? Well, it wasn't the only Evangelion short. While another impact is by far the more popular of the two, Neon Genesis Impacts is a 2015 short film directed and written by Yuhai Sakuragi. The story is about three girls who are part of a musical group known as the Impacts, right as an angel attack is about to take place. But even worse, one of their band members is going to move away because, you know, Tokyo 3 is a really bad place to live because there's an angel attack, like, almost every week. It's an interesting little story that takes place in the rebuild of Evangelion continuity. Which means I shouldn't really be talking about this because I said I wouldn't be talking about rebuild stuff. But I talked about another impact earlier and I think it'd be a mistake if I talked about that but I didn't talk about this, so... So it looks like I broke my rule here. Oops. Oh, and before somebody comments saying that there was another short released in the Japan Animator Expo, there was. But that one is very clearly set in the rebuild continuity, which is why I didn't give it its own place in the iceberg. Meanwhile, Impacts, yeah, it takes place in the rebuild continuity, but honestly, you could probably fit it into the original continuity for the most part, you know? Somewhat, at least. The end of Evangelion was a response to fans. There is a very common theory that the end of Evangelion is the way it is because Anno was angry with fans. Fans claimed that since people were angry about episodes 25 and 26, Anno was like, alright, alright, I'll give you a real ending then. And so, you know, everybody dies, except that they can come back to life, just like Asuka and Shinji. So is there any truth to this theory? No. According to a 2013 interview with Anno, the end of Evangelion was actually pretty close to how he originally wanted the show to end. I mean, in the show, you can literally see Masato and Rasuko's corpses, so... They at least were always gonna die. Also, keep in mind, Space Runaway Idean served as a heavy inspiration for Evangelion. And without spoiling that show, let's just say it doesn't have the happiest of endings. But you then might argue, well, Anno made the end of Evangelion the way it is because of the death threats and harassment. Yes, for those that don't know, Studio Gainax and Anno himself were hit with a ton of death threats and harassment after the ending of the show. And by a ton, I mean very little, if any. Yeah, the whole claim that they received a bunch of harassment and death threats is just not true. At least from what we know. Who knows? In like a year, Anno could come out and be like, yeah, we got a lot of death threats. Like, you know the brief scene in End of Evangelion that shows a bunch of death threats and hate mail that Studio Gainax got? Well, since then, all of them have been translated, and very few of them are actually negative, and none of them have any threats. Though apparently there was one instance where a religious fanatic spray-painted a death threat outside of Gainax's studio, and apparently Anno once got an email saying, I'll kill you. Though I really doubt they made an entire film just because some weirdo spray-painted a wall and some rando sent Anno a troll email. 
Is it honestly that hard to believe that the end of Evangelion just, like, wasn't made as a giant middle finger to fans? Ava and Good Friends Shinji and Good Friends is a series of computer games released in 1999. They're all virtual card games, with each being, well, a different game. Though I guess I should say most of them were card games. There was one titled Missions of Logic, which was a grid puzzle game instead of a card game. In these games, you can play with a variety of different characters, from Shinji, Asuka, Rei, Toji, Masato, and even Gendo wants in on this card action. The series lasted for six installments, and all released within the same year. And people say they release Call of Duty games too often. But then, there's Ava and Good Friends. This game was released shortly before those games, for the PlayStation 1, and has the cast of Evangelion playing a game of Game of Mahjong with several other Gainax characters, like Nadia and Noriko from Gunbuster. Detective Evangelion Released in 2007 for the PlayStation 2, after two different delays, Detective Evangelion is an adventure strategy game set in an alternate continuity, where Shinji is a detective hired by Nerve to investigate a series of murders. In order to figure out who the killer is, Shinji must talk with most of the cast of the original series, explore Tokyo 3, battle angels while inside of an Evangelion, yes, Shinji still becomes an Ava pilot in this universe, and investigate the mysterious new angels, like a striped shape-shifting angel, another eyeball angel, bowling pin angels, a cavity angel? No, no, seriously, there's a cavity angel out there. It's probably the most unique Evangelion video game out there. Though, in all fairness, the fact that it's not a visual novel, an angel raising game, or a pachinko game makes it pretty unique. Oh, and Ray also gets attacked by an angel possessed girl with tentacle arms. So, you know, that makes this game pretty unique as well. Detective Evangelion also features a variety of new characters, like Natsuko, Kayoko, Erika, and Mimi. Oh boy, I sure hope these new characters won't be the murder victims. That would be crazy. There's even some returning characters from previous games, like Kaide, Satsuki, and Aoi from the Shinji Ikari Raising Project. So you're probably wondering, who's the killer? Well, it turns out the murderer is in fact, Kawuru. You see, he had actually murdered all of these new characters and tried framing all their murders on different people. He even ended up killing Gendo. But what's most interesting about this game, to me at least, is the fact that Dr. Katsuragi is in this game. Yes, Masato's father. In a shocking twist of events, her father is alive and has an angel core inside of him. Why does he have an angel core? Well, because he turns into an angel, Masato is forced to order Shinji to kill. God forbid there's a universe where Masato's happy. It's a very weird Evangelion game that I'd probably recommend if you can read Japanese, because like every single Evangelion game, it was never released outside of Japan. Oh, and like a lot of the other games that I've mentioned before, this also received a manga adaptation, but it's easily the shortest out of all of them, with only two volumes ever being released. Side note, in this universe, Nerve created an Ava-sized dentist coat, because I don't know, they just decided to waste some money, I guess. Evangelion from Second Impression. Imanara Kado Presento. Cancelled Edgy Evangelion Film In October 2014, Anna revealed that after the end of Evangelion, he intended to make one more Evangelion film that would take place in an alternate continuity. This film would be darker and edgier, and have a bleaker tone than the original series. For example, this film would take place after humanity almost became extinct, with the last of humanity living in a colony, almost like another impact. Weird. Anyways, the body horror with the Evangelions was going to be jacked up to the extreme. For example, before every single mission, the pilots had to be surgically inserted into the Evas, and then after every mission, they'd have to be surgically removed. This film never ended up happening for two reasons. The first being that End of Evangelion got delayed, 
and the intended director of the film was very reluctant to touch this project. Masato Katsuragi's Reporting Plan Masato Katsuragi's Reporting Plan was a very bizarre game, if you could even call it a game. Released exclusively in Japan in June 2009 for the PlayStation 3 and PSP, this game gave you the ability to hear about the news. No, that's, that's, that, that's not a joke, actually. Uh, this game was pretty much just Masato reading off the news to you. But you could change Masato's hair, costume, and the backdrop she was at, so... I, I guess that's the game part. There were even trophies you could unlock. You know, if you paid a subscription service to uh, be able to unlock them. There's really not much else for me to say about this game, or app, as I should probably call it. It's just Masato's voice actress reading off the news. And after almost exactly one year, reporting plan was shut down and forgotten to time. Side note, I really want to highlight this one video showcasing the game released in 2009 that I found uh, while researching this topic. He's obviously doing a skit, but like, in the skit, he refers to the classical violin songs, like the music that's being played, as Sad music is sad. At least it's not Hannah Montana or some god-awful J-pop. I love this like late 2000s cringe content. I, I, I live for this. This is this is great. I love this First impact killed the dinosaurs First impact is a bit of a mystery in the Evangelion franchise Although not really but we'll get there It's never shown or even directly mentioned and so people begin theorizing that the first impact was actually the meteorite that wiped out the dinosaurs This is because second impact was caused by a meteorite so, you know, I guess that means the first one must have been caused by a meteorite as well. Except that's uh, not true at all, actually. Uh, Second Impact wasn't a meteorite. That was the cover story. Second Impact was actually when the Angel Atom exploded as the result of the contact experiment conducted by SEAL. Well, a group that was being funded by SEAL. There was no meteorite. Like I said, just the cover story. And so if we wanted to use that logic that because one was a meteorite, the other had to be as well, now there's no evidence that suggests that uh, First Impact was a meteorite. In fact, we actually know what First Impact was. It was when the Black Moon collided with the Earth 4 billion years before the events of the show. So yeah, First Impact didn't actually kill the dinosaurs. Real World Weapons So people might not know this, but a good amount of the guns that the Avas use in the show are based on real world weapons. You know, just modified and, you know, a lot bigger. Take the sniper rifle, for example, which is based on the Accuracy International Arctic Warfare. Then there's the pallet gun, which is based on the Stur ACR. Then there's the bazooka, which is loosely based on the M18 recoilless rifle. There's the positron rifle, which is roughly based on the PTRS-41. And then the handgun, which you probably forgot existed since it's only used in one episode, and I assume gets destroyed while inside that angel. This Ava handgun is based on the Desert Eagle. Side note, this has nothing to do with Evangelion at all, but I just remembered these guns from Last Exile while researching this topic. I don't know why, I just, I, but I just did. Very underrated anime, very obscure weapon, only seen like twice in the show. Putting them in the video purely because there's no images or videos of them online at all, Except, you know, the actual show itself. Very cool looking. I like it. Go watch that show. Scrapped plot lines. From episodes 17 to 26, a lot of planned plot elements had to be scrapped. Not because of budget reasons or anything, but because while the episodes were in production, the 1995 Tokyo Subway Sarin attack occurred. And apparently some of the plot elements that were going to be in the show were too similar to that terrorist attack so they had to remove them from the show. Some have theorized that maybe in the finale, the JSDF were going to gas the Geofront, but that's just a theory with very little, if any, evidence at all. Which, if this theory's true, then, like, yeah, it makes sense that you'd want to remove that from the show after the uh, terror attack. The JRA Instrumentality Project in 2012, the Japan Racing Association partnered with Studio Dynex to create four commercials promoting horse racing that featured Masato narrating over an Evangelion horse hybrid. Yes, an Evangelion horse hybrid. This bizarre abomination was named Ava Impact and was created by a combination between nerve technology and the DNA from various legendary horses with a 150-year lineage. 
It was also the star of a tie-in promotional campaign called the JRA Instrumentality Project. This campaign even had its own website that I can't find a single image of, it's kind of lost media at this point, that introduced the basics of horse racing to people, only they use Evangelion keywords to explain the horse racing stuff. It's a very bizarre crossover, but it's not the only time the JRA have asked an anime franchise to promote them. Cancelled Evangelion Epilogue. So this is a real quick one, because we don't know much about this. In early 2020, Anno revealed that in the early 2000s, he was working on and off on plans for an epilogue to Evangelion. Whether this would have been a film, an OVA, an entire series, we don't know. He didn't really go into much detail about it. The only thing we do know is that he would eventually cancel this epilogue idea and instead just begin work on the rebuild films. Cartoon Network. In February 2003, Cartoon Network had this thing called Giant Robot Week, where they play a bunch of mecha-themed episodes of their shows, and they aired some dubbed mecha anime during the day, instead of at night on Toonami. But shockingly, on February 24th and 25th, they aired the first two episodes of Evangelion. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why? Well, probably because somebody looked at the show and was like, well, it's a cartoon, but this must be for kids. Now, these were the only two episodes that were ever aired on Cartoon Network. But the rest of the show aired on Toonami two years later. And just like you'd imagine, they had to censor quite a lot of the show. Sadly, for a long time, the Cartoon Network versions of these episodes were considered lost media. But thankfully, last year, the two Cartoon Network Evangelion episodes were found and uploaded to archive.org, where you can watch them to this day. So, what were some of the changes? Well, the blood and swearing was all removed, and certain scenes were zoomed in or zoomed out to, like, block certain things. There was one big change they did, though, and that was giving Masato a bra while she's bathing. What a price to pay! The Axis powers won World War II. So you might think this is a joke entry. Well, it's not. There is a legitimate theory that in the world of Evangelion, the Axis powers won World War II. The only evidence that points to this are the fact that in, in Evangelion, the two most powerful countries on the planet are Germany and Japan. But since there's literally nothing resembling the Axis powers in this series, or Imperial Japan, or any, anything like that, and, you know, the fact that other countries like the US and Russia exist, I think it's safe to say that they didn't win in the Evangelion universe. Death True Evangelion Death True is a cut of Death and Rebirth that aired on televisions in January of 1998. This version of the film was edited personally by Masayuki, an episode director and animator of the original show. This cut of the film is rather strange as it removes all of the new scenes added into Death and Rebirth, and all of the end of Evangelion scenes are removed as well. This version is actually kind of hard to come by, as it's only been released on DVD once in the Archives of Evangelion DVD box set from 2013. In fact, I can't find a single image of it online. Campus Apocalypse Neon Genesis Evangelion Campus Apocalypse, aka Neon Genesis Evangelion Academy Record of Heaven's Descent, is one of the weirdest Ultra Universes in the Evangelion franchise. Written by Min Min, this manga ran from October 2007 to December 2009, and had four volumes. The plot follows Shinji attending a Catholic school called the Nerve Foundation Academy, when suddenly he's roped into a battle against angels by Rei, Kawuru, and Asuka. In order to battle these angels, who are trying to destroy humanity by obtaining cores, Shinji gets the powers of Eva, a manifestation of the most powerful form of his will. These take the forms of a sword for Kaoru, a whip for Asuka, a spear for Rei, and a gun for Shinji. And so, Shinji and along with the rest of the Guardians team up to save the world. Like I said, it's a very weird alternate universe, as at first glance, you probably wouldn't even realize this was related to Evangelion. But Shinji, Rei, Kaoru, and Asuka aren't the only returning characters. Kensuke is here as well and gets manipulated by an angel to, to spread a video game around the school's computers to establish a link to Nerve HQ. And eventually Shinji and Nausicaa have to travel into the virtual world to fight it. Toji and Hikari also exist in this universe, but they don't really do much at all. 
Masato and Kaji are also here, with Kaji playing a decently sized role as a journalist who has custody of Shinji. Gendo's also here, and everyone thought he was dead, but nope, he's alive. Except, no, the Gendo in this universe is actually dead. This Gendo is from an alternate universe. And speaking of alternate universes, this continuity is pretty important in the Evangelion multiverse, as there's the world tree in it. Basically, it's the representation of the entire multiverse, and if it were to die, then all of the realities would merge into one. So the fact that the original series, the rebuild films, Anima, Girlfriend of Steel, the Shinji Akari Racing Project, Girlfriend of Steel 2nd, the JRA crossover, the PUBG crossover, the Transformers crossover, another Impact, Secret of Evangelion, etc, etc, all those continuities exist because Shinji and crew in this universe saved the world tree. Wild stuff. Overall, it's a pretty short yet very important alternate universe in Evangelion. Typing Project E Released in 1999 for PC, and in 2001 for the PlayStation 2 and Dreamcast, Neon Genesis Evangelion Type Project E is quite literally an educational Evangelion video game that teaches you how to type. Well, okay, let me rephrase that. It teaches you how to type fast. How does it do this? Why by having you play mini games, of course? Type fast to help Asuka jump on different battleships? Help Shinji Masato stop Jet Alone's nuke from going off by typing fast? Shoot angels by typing fast? Help Shinji and Asuka dance by typing fast? Battle a reel by typing fast? And reveal slice like pictures of the Evangelion characters by typing fast. Which, uh, fun fact, is the only time Rei appears in this game, outside of the title card. Which is really, really weird. Also, just throwing this out here, there should be more art to Misato in Volleyball Gear. Gotta love how there's a typing minigame where if you fail, a nuke goes off. Typing Project E also received a sequel titled Evangelion Typing Project Advanced for PC and Dreamcast in 2001. Like the last one, it's a collection of typing minigames, though these are all different. For example, in this game, you synchronize with Ava units by typing fast, you make school lunches with Akari by typing fast, you romance either Maya, Asuka, or Rei by typing fast, sing karaoke with Shinji, Asuka, and Rei by typing fast, and defeat the mass production Avas with Asuka by typing fast. That's a very weird scene to adapt in a typing game. Quantum Rei. This is a popular theory about Rei in the original series. Or should I say, series of theories. All of this spawns from two scenes in the show. The first scene is of Shinji's hallucination of Rei at the beginning of the show. Though this couldn't have been any hallucination of Rei since he'd never met her at this point. And the second scene being the ending of episode 26, where we see Rei just kind of standing there in the middle of the ocean. But this isn't possible because at this point, she's supposed to be dead. So what are the theories behind this? The first theory is that this Rei is a representation of you and or Lilith, and that they're watching over Shinji. There's also the theory that these Rei figures are Ava Unit 1 trying to contact Shinji by using the image of Rei. There's really no right or wrong answer about this, I guess. I mean, people are still debating about this to this day. But you're probably wondering now, why did I call this entry Quantum Rei? Well, because in episode 23, we see the words Top, Bottom, and Strangeness are written on the wall in the room that Rei was born in. These are terms from quantum mechanics, so the fact that they're written in the show, in her room, must mean that Rei has something to do with quantum mechanics. This leads into two more theories. The first being that the Rei Shinji sees at the beginning and ending of the show are in fact the Rei from the end of the show who transcended time after gaining godlike powers. And the final theory I'll be mentioning is that Rei is a quark. Now, I'm not very smart, and I'm just a dude who makes videos on the internet, so I'm not going to pretend to understand quantum mechanics in the slightest. But from what I can gather, a quark is a basic subatomic particle, and can be in more than one place at a time. And since we see Rei at the end of Evangelion being, well, everywhere at once, that must mean she's a quark or something. The End of Evangelion Alternate Endings The ending of the end of Evangelion is legendary for its sad, but yet kind of hopeful ending. However, this ending wasn't always going to be the original ending. In fact, going off original scripts for episodes 25 and 26, this was the third ending planned. The first ending had all the main characters' names in the graves that Shinji raised 
with Asuka kicking hers down, saying, idiot. And the second ending was, well, much more in line with Devilman. In this ending, Shinji is lying on the beach holding Rei's hand. Shinji looks over at her, only to see that it's just her severed arm. Shinji then monologues about how he was the only human self-reflective enough to ever return from instrumentality, which means that he'll spend the rest of his life alone, only after finally being able to find the will to live with others. The scene would then cut to Ava Unit 1 on the moon, with its head broken, revealing woman's hair. So yeah, if you're one of those dudes who thinks the ending of Evangelion is like beyond depressing, just know it could have been 10 times worse. Kawuru's Cat Originally, Kawuru was going to have a cat in the show. Yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, the cat was removed from the show due to budget concerns. And uh, that's really all we know about it. We don't know what this cat's purpose was. Though, knowing Evangelion and other anime, it'd probably just be like a representation of Kawuru in some way. Though in the manga, Kawuru would still have interactions with a cat. Oh. My roommate is a cat, this is not. Misato Gillian. This is a very bizarre fan doujin that, as the name suggests, is about Misato becoming an Evangelion and fighting angels. Though, I guess saying she becomes an Evangelion would be kind of a lie. She just grows to the size of one. So while there's no banging in this doujin, this probably did something for someone. Anyways, in the story, she's injected with a serum that makes her grow super tall, and she battles an angel by burping at it after drinking some giant beer, and then smashing it around before going berserk. Meanwhile, Shinji and the crew are just, you know, chilling at Nerveland, a nerve-themed carnival. The story ends with Misato not being able to shrink back down to normal, and that's where it ends. Yeah, it's a pretty weird doujin, but I mean, it's kind of funny, so I do recommend checking out. It was created by Kibihiko Tobiyama. Wait, the creator and artist of Azumanga Deo and Yatsuba made Misato Gellion? And this isn't even the only Evangelion doujin he's made? He also made Angel's Rest and Ayanami's Fan? Huh. Weird. Ray and the Moon Throughout the series, Ray is often associated with the moon. In fact, there's barely any scenes of the moon in the show without Ray in front of it. So, why is this? Well, because it matches with her character. Most people associate the moon with being calm or quiet, mysterious even, just like Rei. Meanwhile, Asuka is shown with the sun in the background quite often, as it matches with her character. She's hot-tempered and explosive, you know, kind of like the sun's fiery, well, fire. This is to reinforce the idea that these two characters are counterparts to each other. Further evidence for this is when Rei and Asuka are both under the spotlight, Rei's looks like the moon, while Asuka's looks like the sun. And of course, there's their plug suits. Rei's is white, like the moon, while Asuka's is red, like the sun. There's also this idea I found in an Ava Geeks article about the subject. I don't really know about this one, but I thought I'd just throw it in here for completionist's sake. Ava 4 Sim Date RPG Released in 2003 on Newgrounds, Ava 4 Sim Date RPG is a parody visual novel. It's well known in the Evangelion community for being very stupid, for lack of a better word. By the way, I've had to censor some words in these images because YouTube gets mad if there's certain swear words typed on screen, so... Sorry. This game has you play as one of four variations of Shinji, as he goes around Tokyo 3 trying to date Asuka or Rei while battling angels. And uh, a lot of things happen. A lot of wacky, wacky things happen. Truthfully, there's not really much else I can say about it. it. It's just an insanely funny parody visual novel from Newgrounds. Simple as that. Neon Genesis Evangelion 2 Neon Genesis Evangelion 2 is an Evangelion RPG released for the PlayStation 2 in November 2003 and the PSP in April 2006. And before you ask, no, it's not a sequel to the show. It's a sequel to the Nintendo 64 Evangelion game. The game has you play as Shinji as he goes through the events of the show, talking with people and raising his AT field, which in turn makes his attacks and health stronger during the combat sequences, where you gotta take down the angels. So really, it's a combination between a combat game and a life sim, with visual novel and dating sim elements thrown in. The game is well known for its various stories. You see, in the game, it allows you to play as a variety of different characters playing out different scenarios. 
And by scenarios, I mean play through the main plot of the show with some alternate story beats or different objectives you gotta do to change the outcome of the show. Though there is one scenario titled Another World, where it's an alternate universe scenario where Shinji isn't a naval pilot, and it's just a slice of life story. But then there's the PSP version of it, which is basically the PS2 version, but expanded upon heavily. For example, in the original game, there were 11 different scenarios to play through, while in the PSP version, there's 18 different scenarios. And let's go over all of them. Scenario 1, Angel Attack. You play as Shinji, and it's basically just playing through the entire show. Scenario 2, I like this world though. In this scenario, you gotta play as Shinji as well, and the main objective is to get good relationships with everybody. Scenario 3, Rei, Beyond the Heart, you play as Rei, and you gotta fight angels and have at least one good relationship with somebody who's not Gendo. Doing so will prevent Rei from helping Gendo activate Third Impact. Scenario 4, A Kiss in a Taboo Place. In this, you play as Asuka and battle angels and eventually the mass production Avas. So basically just like Asuka playing through the events of the show. Scenario 5, A Woman's Fight. In this, you play as Masato and have to investigate Gendo and discover Nerve's secret. So basically, it's Masato stopping Third Impact from happening. Scenario 6, Human Instrumentality Project. In this scenario, you play as Gendo and have to raise your relationship with Rei in order for you to do the Human Instrumentality Project. Fun times. Scenario 7, The Dream of a Brightful Day in the End. In this, you play as Fuyasuki, trying to uncover what happened to you while also forcing Shinji to cross-dress as his mother and then take pictures of him. Evil. Just... just actually evil. Scenario 8. Ardent Woman. In this scenario, you play as Rasuko, as you seduce all the men in the show to make Gendo jealous. And yes, this includes Shinji, Toji, and Kaworu. This is a horrible idea for a scenario. Scenario 9. The Peak of the Young Grass. In this scenario, you play as Maya and try to date Aoba. Not Ritsuko for some reason, even though it would make a lot more sense. Scenario 10, Marvelous Sky. In this scenario, you play as Hyuga and try to prevent Masato from dying. Scenario 11, Cobalt Sky. You play as Ayaba, trying to rediscover his passion for music. Scenario 12, Versus Seal. In this scenario, you play as Kaji, acting out as a triple spy, getting every single piece of classified information. More on that later. Scenario 13, Prudence of the Heart. In this scenario, you play as Toji, as he becomes an Ava pilot and battles every single angel in mass production Ava. Scenario 14, Waking Up from the Dream. In this scenario, you play as Kensuke, as he uncovers some nerve secrets and eventually becomes an Ava pilot. Though in this scenario, Toji gets killed by Zeril. Rest in peace. Scenario 15, The Person Who Watched the Spring. In this scenario, you play as Hikari, as she goes through a slice-of-life comedy, trying to get Toji to notice her and prevent his death. Scenario 16, Broken Wings. In this scenario, you play as Kowaru, in an alternate universe, where he's the third angel, and must stop third impact from happening after regaining his memories of being Adam. Scenario 17, Yet Untouched by the Hands of Mankind. In this scenario, you play as Pen Pen and do various raffles and coupon sheets to get a robot plush toy he wants. Yeah, this one's not as serious as the last scenario. And finally, we have scenario 18, Silver Myriotic Balance. In this scenario, you play as Shinji again, and everything sucks. No, that's, like, not a joke at all. That's literally it. Everybody has a poor relationship with Shinji. Uh, despite there being five pilots, Shinji's the only one that's ever sent out to fight. And Ava Unit 1 is almost always going berserk. From what I can gather, it's basically Scenario 1, just with the difficulty spiked up to 11. Oh, and uh, yeah, there's also that Slice of Life scenario for the PS2 game I mentioned earlier, but that's a PS2 exclusive scenario. Finally, there's the classified information to talk about. Throughout the game, you can find various pieces of classified information that serve as the game's main collectibles. However, they're not just nothing collectibles that do absolutely nothing for you, like 90% of Call of Duty Intel. These collectibles give answers to a bunch of Evangelion's mysteries and lore. In fact, Anna was interviewed extensively while making these collectibles, so they're... somewhat canon, I think? So how many of these collectibles are there? 469. There's 24 topics and 4 tiers of information for each topic, so there's 469 collectibles. That sounds like hell. The Shinji Akari Detective Diary. 
The Shinji Ikari Detective Diary is an extremely short-lived manga released from February 2010 to November of the same year. It only had two volumes, and told the story of Shinji being forced to help Kaiji and Kaworu solve supernatural mysteries. It's set in an alternate universe where Kaiji is a detective and Kaworu is his assistant. A true Sherlock and Watson, or Holmes and Watson, or Gnomes and Watson, or wow they really want to make a cinematic universe based on the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes movies? That's not gonna work. Moment. Anyways, other Evangelion characters show up, like Misato, Pen Pen, Rei, Asuka, and Gendo. Also, the Evangelions in this universe aren't actually Evangelions, and are instead a weird combination between stands from JoJo and servants from Fate. Yeah, you see those dudes? They're the Avas of Shinji, Asuka, Rei, and Kuoru. Very bizarre. Like I said though, this story was very short, only having two volumes. This was because it was cancelled, either due to bad sales or a poor reception. It's overall a very obscure little oddity. Evangelion Vox Released in 1997, Evangelion Vox is an album containing a bunch of R&B, hip-hop remakes and remixes of pieces from the Evangelion soundtrack. Though not all the songs were remakes and remixes, some were literally just original songs that had absolutely nothing to do with Evangelion or its soundtrack. There were even other songs that sometimes sampled pieces of audio from the show, and there were even other songs that only loosely mentioned Evangelion. It's an extremely bizarre combination of genres and tones. Frankly, I have no idea why this album was made, or who this album was for. I'd play samples of songs for you, but I'd be hit with a copyright strike instantly, so I'm not gonna do that. Weird Evangelion DVD Easter Egg Okay, this isn't actually an Easter Egg, but people have been calling it an Easter Egg for four years now, so I'm just gonna keep calling it that. In 2018, a really weird Evangelion secret was discovered on a DVD copy of the series. Collection 7, to be exact. The OP who discovered this easter egg went to the bonus features section of the DVD and clicked on Ayaba's character bio, and after 12 seconds, a short clip of a woman in a bikini laying down on a bed played before it went back to the menu. He wasn't the only person to see this. In fact, in 2006, somebody on the Rooster Teeth message board also claimed to have seen this exact thing. So why was this in an Evangelion DVD? Well, it turns out the woman in the video was the former adult star, now web developer, Annabelle Chong, and that pretty much revealed what this quote-unquote easter egg was. You see, a documentary about Chong was released in 1999, and it was distributed in Australia by Madman Entertainment. Madman Entertainment also distributed Evangelion in Australia. So while editing the DVD, a short clip from the documentary was accidentally placed in a copy of Evangelion. Mystery solved. The future of the franchise. And so we've reached the end of the iceberg. This last entry is about the future of the franchise, as now that the final rebuild film has been released, nobody really knows what's going to happen now. Will there ever be another Evangelion show or movie? Hell, even another console game? Well, like I said, nobody knows. In regards to if Anna will come back, he's already said numerous times the final rebuild film was his final Evangelion project. Though, in an interview in 2021, he said, quote, I don't feel a need to see Shinji and the other characters anytime soon, but that doesn't mean I don't want to see them ever again. There might come a time where I meet them again. This suggests that maybe he could come back in the future and do another Evangelion thing. He's also said in the past that he'd like to open the franchise up to new creators, and turn Evangelion into the new Gundam, basically meaning that new directors and writers can create their own Evangelion continuities in animation. Personally, I believe that we'll see another Evangelion show or movie at some point in time. I doubt it'll be canon to either the original series or rebuild films, but instead be a new continuity that probably won't even feature Shinji, Asuka, Rei, Masato, Gendo, etc. Only time will tell, I suppose. Though, like I said earlier in the video, I would not be opposed to an adaptation of Anima. That story sounds absolutely insane. And that's it. The end of the Evangelion Iceberg. I hope you guys really enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun making it. This is the first anime iceberg I've done. I'll probably make more of them. I've, I've promised a fate one centuries ago. It's gonna happen. It, it, trust me, it will happen. I just... It, fate is very complicated. <laughs> very, very complicated. And while I'm a big fan of the series, 
I'm not going to pretend to understand like probably like 70% of the lore and that sh and that uh, that stuff. So yeah, there's that. Um but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh like I said earlier in the video though, um I didn't, you know, I didn't cover the rebuild stuff with this. Hopefully it didn't bother you guys. Um I just don't really care for them. Granted, I I haven't seen the last one. Uh I've only seen the second and third one and the and the first one. I don't know why I have to, the first three I, I saw. Uh, but I've never seen the fourth one, which, I mean, I, I know what happens in it, roughly, like, for the most part, I know what happens in it, and none of it really sounds that, in, like, good to me, but, um, I mean, I've heard people say it's good, and people will enjoy it, I guess, I don't know, I'll probably watch it one day, I just, it's not, it, it doesn't sound like a movie for me, you know, I mean, I was gonna watch it, but I mean, if you don't like the first three installments of, like, a film series, there's a very good chance you're probably not gonna like the fourth one, you know? Like, I don't know, it, it's, it doesn't really, doesn't really sound like my thing, I guess. I mean, more power to people who like it, though, you know, if it, if, it, if you love it, you know, if it, I'm happy for you, just the rebuild films are not really my thing. Visually, they're really nice looking, and they got amazing soundtracks, like, I don't think anyone can deny that, they have a, some amazing scores, but uh, just not really for me, I, I, I don't really like the fight scenes, especially the ones in uh, 3.0, I don't. I really don't like the weird transformations and stuff like that. I, I feels very weird to me. Truthfully, I'm, I'm rambling at this point just to get it to two hours, the two hour mark, because uh, a two hour long video looks better than like a one hour and 97 minute long video, you know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. So I, I, I always say, I always do this in the, uh, the outros. I always say, hope you enjoyed like 10 times. Next time in September, it will be the Gears of War Iceberg. And then in October, we'll be doing the Alien and UFO Iceberg that I mentioned in the uh, Cryptid Iceberg last year. And I don't know about November. I don't, I'm not sure about November yet. We'll see. But December, I, uh, I, I'll i say this. December, I'm, I'll be, I'm going to be doing one that's a uh, request Iceberg. But uh, I'm not going to give any hints at that. That's, 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 all, we're gonna, that's all I'm going to give you. All right, so yeah, that's the that's the video. Uh, drop a comment, leave a like, don't subscribe, do the little notification bell. Comment below, you know, who's your favorite character in the series? Do you prefer, you know, the original or the rebuilds or whatever? Do any of the the alternate universes like Anima or uh, the detec uh, Detective Evangelion or any of the scenarios in Neon Genesis Evangelion Two or uh, the Shinji Ikari Project, Girlfriend of Steel One or Two? Like, do any of, do any of them sound interesting? Would you like to see any of those, like, adapted in animation? Truthfully, I don't think anyone's going to get to this point in the video. I'm pretty sure everyone's going to be logged out by now. Uh, but, yeah. Have a good one, guys. Stay safe. And I'll uh, catch you back in September for Gears of War. Pee -pee -poo -poo.